so often when you talk to people and you talk about actually teaching tech in elementary school, they'll say, not everybody's going to grow up to be a software engineer, so we do not need to teach tech in the elementary school. So I would posit a different question, right, which is, so not everybody's going to grow up to be a novelist. Why should we teach writing in elementary school? And as you guys all know, we don't have to be a poet or a journalist or a playwright in order to use writing every day. And so it really is critical and fundamental to start from the beginning at early stages to teach all of these skills. So the question when you talk to a computer scientist is, what does tech mean to you? When you talk to a not computer scientist, somebody who has not done programming or software engineering, and you get things like keyboarding, which is a term I just learned. Apparently, it's the newfangled word for typing. Um, navigating an iPad is a thing, how to actually make it work, uh, how to use Google, how to use YouTube, and kind of right following from that would be how to, safe, how to surf the web safely. Uh, and then, of course, there's the quintessential playing and coding video games. So that's what tech means to a lot of people. What does tech mean to me? It means problem solving. It means observation and empathy. It means communication and collaboration. It means analysis, prioritization, and persistence. It means creativity and innovation. So those are all big words, but I will say that it's not just coding. That, that you, you will see these principles apply. They've actually been codified in uh, design principles and product management and software principles that are in use today. So things that you guys have heard of probably like U lean UX or design thinking or agile or iterative. So all those things have very formalized rules about how these same skills are applied and how you should actually execute on them. So as you're learning programming or coding or technology or whatever it is, you're actually just doing exercises to put these skills into practice. So. I'm actually a great case in point, right? I studied computer science. I have a degree uh, uh, in computer science. And I started out as a software engineer. I started at a tech company, a software company. I worked on a project called Shockwave, which introduced uh, animation to the web. Um, and I took those same skills over the course of my career and translated them to other industries, and I ended up in television. I ended up running digital at BET. Um, so going from tech to technology, right? It's the same skills across the board get translated. And then I took an even bigger leap. Uh, I got a call from the White House, and that's actually a long story, <laughs> but very entertaining. Um, and I was invited, I was asked to come join a team called the US Digital Service. So Obama created this group called the US Digital Service uh, about a year ago, and it was modeled off of the rescue of healthcare.gov, which is you take a bunch of tech folks from private sector, parachute them in to team with an agency, and see what we can actually do in, in a short amount of time. So he wanted to do this because he also saw the value of taking those same skills and applying them to large, intractable, massive, mammoth problems that will fundamentally change the way government interfaces with the American people and will also hopefully have an impact on the future of this country. So I will tell you that that's heady talk, right? So for me, I never thought when I was studying computers that one day I would actually be changing people's lives for the better in this way. So I'm going to give you an example. So I'm currently serving, I think Hans, Hank said, as the Chief Digital Services Officer for the Department of Education. Uh, my first project was something called the College Scorecard, which you may have heard of. Um, the president announced it three weeks ago. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about why this is so important. A college education is the surest path to the middle class. Unemployment rates for people who have only a high school diploma is 12%. If you have a college degree, it's 3%. There are studies that actually say that over the course of your lifetime, if you have a degree from a four-year institution, you will earn a million more dollars than not. So critical, crucial things, and the more people we can get into school with degrees, the better off we will be as a country. So these are kind of the, like, you're going to come in and solve this, right? But it's not about creating these, like, crazy technology solutions. It's actually about using the problem solving, the technical skills that I've learned throughout my career to solve this problem. So, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about those things, right? So problem solving was the first thing. Uh, the idea for this, for this project was actually to, to change the conversation. We wanted to actually get the data into consumers' hands so they could make 
great informed choices about what school was right for them and basically evaluate how to get the best bang for their educational buck. So how to do that? First question that one learns as a computer scientist. And, uh, and what we did was we built the consumer tool that you see in front of us. Uh, but beyond that, we realized that in order to change the conversation, it couldn't be just the Department of Education who was creating these kinds of tools. We needed to actually, what we call, set the data free and actually get it out so that it was accessible to the public for other people who might be creating their own tools to reach different audiences. So we created an API, an application programming interface. And we've actually had a bunch of uh, launch partners and it's been really, really successful and effective. So understanding kind of what it is that you're trying to solve and then figuring out the path to get there is something that you learn. And again, I'm using a tech example, but I'll use some more examples that are less techy. So analysis, prioritization, and persistence. Uh, many of you are probably familiar with this, right? It's all about actually building a minimally viable product. It's about figuring out how to actually tailor what it is that you're building for the customer and for the message and for the, the goal that you're trying to reach. And so this was just an example of us taking, uh, providing a, a small, short, quick to read value snapshot that people could see because people were not familiar with some of the metrics that might be available to them. So implementing a culture of iteration, right? You don't have to solve the whole, you don't have to boil the ocean. You just need to actually figure out what it is that you're trying to achieve. The next thing is, the next two are observation and empathy and communication and collaboration. So uh, this is a great example. We implemented uh, this project using user-centered uh, uh, design, and we went out and talked to 79 users and stakeholders. Uh, I will say I've been in government, I think, four days, and I was on this project, and I was having, I was having like the shakes because I hadn't talked to a student yet, and I was like, oh my god, I need to, how do I get, I had been in DC, right? I live in New York. I was like, how do I, where can I find some students? Uh, and somebody was like, well, we can go to the mall. And I was like, oh, yeah, the mall, that's genius. Where the stores are, that makes, and she was like, no. So outside of your office, there's a thing, patch of grass, it's called the mall. And so we totally went out there and started accosting students as they came out of the Air and Space Museum. And it was great because we got people from Wyoming and from Nebraska and from uh, across the country because it was spring break. Um, so it's that kind of, kind of imaginative thinking that you learn to just think outside of the box. Uh, we also spoke to uh, people who'd written letters to the president. We went to Anacostia High School. You see these lovely guidance counselor and two students. Um, and it really is is about getting out there, communicating, collaborating, understand how it is, right? And so those are all tech skills as I perceive them. Uh, and then creativity and innovation, right? So. Uh, you learn to do low fidelity prototypes. And so in this example, we actually used cardboard to cut out what looked like an iPhone or that could be used like an iPhone. And so the idea is really just using your imagination and figuring out it's not just about the solution, but it's also the creative paths to get there. Um, so for me, understanding that using my tech skills to actually open the doors to opportunities to a college education for more students, like I, I can't think of a worthier cause and, and something that is kind of further removed from what I originally thought I was studying, why I was studying what I was studying. Uh, and I will also say that the Department of Education has been incredible at embracing this other way of thinking about problems. So they've actually invited me and my team in to help them solve other issues that are completely untech related. So one is around uh, processing of claims around student loans. And literally our suggestion was, hey, what we did was we called up five loan services and said, hi, I'm a student and I need to do such and such. What should I do? Turns out the servicers didn't know. And so actually just putting yourself into that mind frame and that perspective, and we actually brought that to the uh, chief of staff of the secretary, and we're like, hey, we suggest this. And they went off and did it. Um, I'm also working with somebody from, who's working on place-based initiatives, like things like the Harlem Children's Zone. So uh, in terms of trying to figure out how to best support them and how to actually bring other, uh, other entities together and all, so they can all work together. So these are non-tech related at all, but understanding how to frame a problem, how to think about a problem, how to think for solutions, that is all stuff that you learn when you learn tech. So these are all the skills that I talked about. I just kind of went through the list of things. You can see very clearly, right, how this is used. So this is a tech example. I'm going to use one that is uh, much less tech, which is 
uh, there was a group of students who actually tried to put together a project around uh, creating a, a cheaper neonatal incubator. So uh, one of the uh, biggest cause of deaths um, for, for, for premature birth is actually is, um, is hypothermia. Um, and that's solved by providing heat. And so these guys all got together, and these are people who didn't write, they were engineers, they were software folks, they didn't know anything about health. And so they were like, okay, well how do we actually find a, an interesting way to solve this problem? So they kind of did research and looked at it, and they were like, okay, we're gonna figure out a way to build a cheaper incubator. One of the things you learn in tech is to actually empathize and to actually go to where your user is and see what they're doing and see how it works for them and see what their problem actually is. So a few of them flew to both India and I think Nepal and went to the hospitals and looked at the situation, looked at the incubators uh, and realized that some of them were empty. And they were like, well, so what's happening? So it doesn't seem like you guys need more incubators. So it turns out the women and the babies were four hours away and didn't have a way to get to the hospital with their children. And so it completely reframed the problem that they were trying to solve, right? But they, if they hadn't used what I call tech skills to actually go out and, and figure out what the, what the problem was and talk to people and use the collaboration and communication skills, they would have created something that maybe wasn't uh, as useful as what they did end up creating. So, um, I think this is in market now and it's already saved thousands of lives. And so again, this is another great example of just how you can use these lovely skills to, um, to create and solve real, create solutions and solve real problems. I'm gonna quickly just talk about two other projects. Um, one is the police data initiative. So in the wake of Mike Brown and Eric Garner, there were two presidential innovation fellows um, who were working with the Department of Justice and who basically were like, we wanna see, they were engineers and they were like, how can we help with this problem, right? This seems like a massive thing that we are very, very interested in trying to help solve. Um, they wanted to figure out how they could change or uh, encourage the national dialogue around policing reform. And so they used these same principles to try to improve the dialogue, but also to build community trust. And as part of this, they actually have 21 jurisdictions that are actually participating in the effort. They are looking at how to best collect and use data and have that shared and have that again start the conversation and how to actually make it build community trust. Another example is actually around crowdsourcing of mapping. Uh, so on April 25th of 2015, at 11.56 a.m., there was a 7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck Nepal. So it was uh, 9.3 miles deep and it had tremors and aftershocks and it killed at least 5,000 people. So what they actually did was um, they created a project to actually figure out how they could harness the power of people globally to figure out how to map where roads were, right? So there were first responders who needed information about what was passable and where they could get through and what was collapsed and what wasn't. And so they actually galvanized, I think it's 2,000 digital volunteers. They mapped 13,000 miles of terrain. Um, they identified over 3,000 uh, damaged buildings. So again, these are all examples of, it's not so much about the use of the technology, it's about figuring out an alternate way to come up with creative solutions. So I would actually posit that everything today is a product. Um, it's not just software, it is everything that you see in front of you, it's every service, it's every problem that exists in the world. Um, so I've just, show, I've just shown you a few, a few different versions of that. And so the question becomes, shouldn't our children learn the skills to be problem solvers and communicators and creators, innovators, and most of all, thinkers? So if you go back to, no, not everyone will grow up to be a software engineer, and so do we really need to teach, teach tech in elementary school? I think the answer is absolutely. So, thank you.